Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to blow up some LEDs. Uh, we're going to test out some the, the cheapest LEDs you can get on Amazon, uh, which I've had for quite a while. They've just been like in the bottom of a parts drawer. I bought them because I was curious because I'd heard horrible things about them and tested them when I first got them. And I didn't immediately see any problems with them. They got shoved in a drawer and somebody recently asked me for some of that particular LED. They just needed that size of them. Um, and I don't stock them as something that I sell, but I was like, sure, you can just have these ones that I have. We went and plugged one in and it was immediately blinking, like out of the package blinking. Um, so I was like, oh, let me put all of them on this thing and test it. And like three of them out of the package were blinking. Uh, so we, we're going to do a video on it and we're going to test some other cheap LEDs I had laying around that are I didn't per purchase these. They were actually sent to me from a customer. They said that they're good quality ones, but they are clearly really cheap ones, but they had me put them in their instrument cluster anyways. Um, Cause I do not stock the uh, 194 or 168 LEDs for like 99 to 02 GM instrument clusters. I just don't stock LEDs for them. Cause I don't have a brand of them that I trust and like to use to put into a customer's vehicle. So I just don't stock them and just say, Hey, look, it's just a socket. I have the sockets. I can give you some of the sockets with the rebuild and then you just go get your, your LED. Cause you, the, uh, the bulb that's actually in there from the truck that doesn't come out, you can't uh, switch it. Um, if you get them out of like the Savannah van, they actually did have a um, removable bulb on most of those. And then all the Fords had removable bulbs on them. I don't know why GM did not use a removable bulb on the uh, 99 to 02. Uh, but yeah, that's beside the point. So I had these LEDs and I wasn't happy with them. So I figured we'll put them on a little breadboard here. We'll light them up. We'll uh, see how many of them are blinking at 14 volts from the factory and then drive them until they all fail. We're just gonna keep turning up the voltage till they all fail. So um, yeah, let's get to that. That's the interesting part. There's not nothing scientific about this. Really, you should uh, underrate the resistors that you, well, overrate the resistors that you use in your LED. So that way uh, you can act, you know, if say the alternator breaks and it starts putting out 15 volts, it doesn't fry all the LEDs in their, their vehicle. So really, you, should, you shouldn't be driving the LED to its maximum potential at 12 volts because you and I that work on cars know that cars rarely are actually at 12 volts. The, like if you turn the ignition on, you generally are at like 13 volts. Then if you start it, you're generally at like 14.2-ish volts. Um, so that's what I test everything at is 14.2 on my bench. Um, but that's just because I went out to my truck one day and stuck a voltmeter on it to see how what it was doing. It was like 14.2. Cool. That's what I'm using. So I've always used 14.2. I don't own that truck anymore. If I were to go put a voltmeter across my uh, Chevy Volt, I get like 360 volts or something. Probably can't test these at 360 volts. Okay. So here we just have them set up at 14 volts and... They're blinking kind of slowly. You know, you just get a kind of random blink out of this one right here. And this guy over here blinks occasionally too. So yeah, they're already failing at 14 volts out of the box, brand new. These probably have been run for a total of 20 minutes now, uh, just from when I tested it in the customer's vehicle and then getting set up to record this video. Uh, and yeah, these come with like a little base on it that looks like this. So that way you could recognize them better. Uh, we'll take a better look at them after the video though. Um, but yeah, so we now have all of the LEDs from that package uh, set up on here to test them. So this is at 14 volts and yeah, already blinking out of the box. That's completely unacceptable. These were probably uh, rated to 12 volts and actually uh, wired up with the maximum current flow at 12 volts for them. So these probably wouldn't have had issues if it was only getting 12 volts, but you know in your car, realistically, you get anywhere between 12 and 15 volts uh, at any given time, just somewhere in between there, depending on what the alternator's doing and, and your RPMs and all that. So uh, this is kind of our, our basic setup for testing it here. Uh, so I'm gonna switch the camera view here where you can see both of them uh, and then we'll, 
go into this a little bit more. Okay, so now you can see the bench top power supply. Um, so you can see them running and see what they're doing at the same time. So yeah, that's at 14 volts. We're gonna turn it up to 15 volts. Uh, and let's go to 15 and a half. And we're just gonna keep going up until they all fail. So there's 15 and a half. Let's see if we start blinking a little bit faster uh, or more often. All right, so not really a huge difference. I mean, it seems to be blinking a little bit faster. Let's uh, take it up to 16 volts. So we're gonna go down to that. And there we go, now we're at 16 volts. We're running almost a full amp uh, through, uh, through this setup here. So we'll see what fails first, the LEDs or the little plastic PCB they're sitting in. So at 16 volts, we're definitely getting a more rapid blink out of them. See what happens at 16 and a half. So now this one has started blinking. That's the first time it's blinked. So we have three of them now that are failing. All right, now we have 17 volts. Oh, there we go. Now we got another one failing. 18 volts. I can smell it too. There, <laughs> we're, we're gonna be letting some magic smoke out here. I think at uh, 19 volts. Oh, we're all we're getting a rapid blink. This one's coming back to life. Which one's gonna fail first? Who lets the magic smoke out? Oh. All right, now we're going up to 20 volts. Oh, I heard a spark. Yeah, this one's catching on fire over here. We're almost done here. So 20 was the most we could give it before they all fail. Let's keep going up. We're at 21. These ones, they don't look like there's just a resistor in there, but we'll take it apart and see it. Um, this one, they just solder a resistor onto the leg of it there. All right, so let's gently take this thing apart and see what the resistor looks like on the inside. Uh, I think we hit it a little too hard. Let's try that again. So see, they just run a resistor through it. They just run it through the PCB there and there's the, the leg of the resistor and then this is just some uh, wire that they ran and they're just all in there. So that's how these things are built. Um, no need to try to save it. It's junk, it's all burnt up. Uh, had I not got it so hot, I'd be able to read the resistor, uh, but it, it looks like it is green, green, brown, and gold. Um, looks like that's the resistor uh, code on there, but I, I'm not sure. So they, they're really dark. That could be green, brown, brown, gold. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So there's two, there were two other LEDs that I was going to test. Um, well, I did test them. I did the whole thing, but I've been editing the video and was like, holy cow, this is like a 30 minute long video now. Nobody's going to want to watch this. So uh, yeah, we're just going to skip to running the other two LEDs at 30 volts and killing them. Um, I, I slowly ramped them all the way up 
and they didn't die until I got to 30 volts, which is the most I can put out of my power supply. Um, I did stop at 25 volts and just skip to 30. I was like, all right, I'm not slowly progressing anymore. This like nothing's happening. So uh, the other two LEDs killed them at 30 volts. Let's take a look at that now. 30 volts. Got like almost five watts going through it, but it's going down. It's going down. So that, that, that means it's probably going to fail soon. There we go. There we go. 30 volts finally kills it. But I'm impressed. 30 volts is way more than you'd expect these to survive at. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. We'll put you out of your misery. So now that I can turn it all the way up to 30, let's see what happens with this one at 30 volts. We're just going to go straight into 30. We're not going to crank it back up. Oh, oh, they're getting darker, it looks like. I think they're going to fail soon. I think they're going out. When do we start blinking or are we just going to fail? Oh, it's melting. It's melting. I'm turning it off. Ah, it melted clean off the resistors. There we go. So that's why it was getting darker. The LEDs weren't failing. It melted the solder and just fell off. All right, well... I hope you guys liked the little test. You know, nothing scientific about it. I was, I was pretty impressed with uh, those two really making it up to that 30 volt range without immediately dying. I was I was really expecting like 20 volts and they were going to be done. Like you give them 20 and they're done. I, I was really surprised that they were, you know, riding out that 20 to 25 as if it was nothing. And then you give them a 30 and then they fail. Uh, so that that was pretty impressive. Um, it was pretty lackluster uh, that, you know, like 16 volts, the other one really started to blink 18. They were like pretty much done. Uh, and yeah, 20, they were just done. Okay, well, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you liked the video, you know, give it that thumbs up. Maybe you can share it, help grow the channel. But uh, yeah, hey, I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you learned something.